What have you been doing that day? Hello everyone. Um, this is just a, a quick video, um, just to say where I've been, why I haven't put any videos out for a little while, and to show a few uh, updates to my workshop. Um, I've had a bit of a perfect storm of problems really, uh, which is why I haven't been able to put any videos out. I've had equipment going wrong in my workshop, my bandsaw packed up, my sander machine broke, my drill press I've had troubles with excessive run out on it making knife making difficult and uh, to top it all the shed in the back garden started to collapse so everything out of the shed ended up being put in my little workshop and I couldn't physically get in there I couldn't actually get to my lathe for quite some time well we had to order a new shed that arrived um, but my diverticulitis flared up. I suffer with diverticulitis and I can go for months without a problem and then it flares up and it lays me quite low and I can't really do much. So I had the new shed in the back garden needing to be kitted out uh, and I wasn't feeling very good. But eventually I got out there, shelved it out so I could move all the clutter out of my little workshop and uh, I also had to build a Wendy house or a playhouse in the back garden. So uh, that was quite a lot to do. Once I'd done that, I could then start on the workshop. I had to get a new bandsaw. Uh, I still haven't fixed the sanding machine. I've had to get a new drill press and I had to move everything around in the garage to accommodate these. But I have created a lot more space out there and it's a lot more workable now. Um, so hopefully, I can start making some more videos again. I've got lots of videos planned. I've got some wood turning projects in mind and some more knife builds to do. Uh, but I'll, uh, yeah, I'll work my way through my list of projects over the next year. I'm still not going to have an awful lot of time to do stuff because uh, I'm in the process of gutting, gutting the bathroom ripping the old bathroom out I've got to put a new bathroom in and I'm doing most of the work myself so that's going to take quite a long time but hopefully I can snatch a few moments to uh, to make some small projects and now my workshop's a lot a lot more usable hopefully I could my time will be a lot more efficient out there so I will be able to do some anyway I'll show you um, a quick tour around my workshop in a moment and uh, thanks to all my subscribers for sticking with me and thanks to all my new subscribers it's absolutely fantastic and uh, hopefully I can provide you with some more interesting videos over the next few months thank you very much please like share and subscribe and I'll be with you all again soon bye bye okay so here's a quick tour of my workshop um, here's my uh, first workbench and I've got my Robert Sorby Pro Edge on here, which is my sort of sharpening station. And uh, underneath there's the accessories for the Robert Sorby and various tools and screws and drills. And then coming across here, this is the new bandsaw. So it's a really good size machine, uh, floor standing. I've got the jockey wheel kit for it because it's important in a small workshop that you can move these things around when needed. Uh, fantastic this is. This is I only just got this before Christmas and I'm so pleased with it. It's a really nice machine. Very powerful and uh, accurate. And uh, yeah, it's just lovely. I've rigged up some uh, dust extraction to it. And then uh, moving along from the bandsaw Here's my lathe, it's the Axminster Trade 181628 lathe and I've done some upgrades to this as well. Uh, it was bench mounted on the that workbench to start with but the height was slightly wrong and it also wasn't that stable and very noisy with tools rattling and things. So I've got the cast iron legs now and onto those I've bolted some brackets so this end I've got some tool storage and my dust extraction uh, pipe connects there 
that runs round to the back of the lathe and comes out here and I can position this to where I'm working it's very low tech I've just built a stand I don't know if you can see that down there it's a bit dark so when I want to move it I'll just pick it up and move it it's got a bit of flexible hose down the back uh, connected to the the other connector on the side of the lathe and uh, at the other end I've built another bracket um, a sort of a shelf it's got the, my brushes on here I use these uh, big decorators brushes for um, brushing the dust off the off the lathe really but uh, they're coming very useful for that what this is for is for when I'm hollowing out and I want to get the tail stock out of the way I can take the tail st stock off the lathe beds and uh, pop it down here out of the way and I'll just try and show you that so what we do loosen that off this slides off the end and then turn it 90 degrees and it just drops in there So as we look from the side, it takes up minimal room. By turning it 90 degrees, it takes up a lot less room. And it's right out of the way, so that when I'm hollowing it, I'm not going to catch my elbow on it, or the end of my gouge. Uh, and it works very well. It's made out of some uh, reclaimed, what looks like mahogany or sapele that I've been given. Uh, I got given quite a few bits of this by a friend of mine, Vic. and. Uh, I've used, used that to make the two brackets on each end. Underneath, I've constructed this box. Um, it's a heavy duty construction out of 18 or 19 millimeter ply. And uh, it goes across the webs on the inside of the castings for the legs. And it straddles those. It's very, very strong. And inside I'm storing tools and lead weights some old uh, barbell weights all sorts of stuff in there all the heavy bits of gear that go along with the lathe like face plates and tool rests and there's old fishing weights in there which I use when I'm gluing stuff as well and there's even a, a roll of old um, roofing lead in there just to add some weight and in the uh, hatch on the front, I've got that's held by chains. And I've made this for the, uh, put my tool rests in. And there's uh, some of my tool rests for the lathe. There we go. And the idea of that, A, I need the storage, and B, it adds a lot of weight to the lathe so that uh, it keeps it more stable, less vibration. Moving along, this is my second workbench where I've got my vise, and I've got various soft jaws that I can put in this vise when I'm doing my knife making. That's a tool carousel where I put my lathe tools that I'm using while I'm working tool chest for spanners and screwdrivers etc that's my arbor press for doing my leather work my stamps rivets and things like that junk and uh, wood store off cuts and then I've got quite a few turning blanks and all my other bits and bobs I tend to try and keep in these really useful boxes uh, everything boxed where possible so it keeps the dust out scroll saw tucked away in the corner there and uh, this is my dust extractor which is a step back in the corner of the workshop and that's on wheels and that can be wheeled around and I just connect it up to whichever machine I'm using uh, over here got more tool storage as I say all in boxes 
chop saw, sliding chop saw. Big heap of bathroom tiles. Massive heap of bathroom tiles. That's the little job I've got to do, which is a bit tedious. That's the broken sanding machine, uh, which I'm gonna have to pull apart and try and fix. Then coming across here, if I back up a bit, you can see it. This is the new drill press. This is uh, the Axminster Trade drill press. It's a lovely bit of kit, really, really heavy duty, very accurate, beautiful. Really pleased with that. It's very heavy, 65 kilos or something it weighs. Um, but it's very, very good. And this next to it is dust extraction. Um, I connect the four inch hose from my dust extractor onto there and it comes out up here and this I can position by the table of my drill press and uh, very useful if I've got a mini drum sander on the drill press. Uh, there we are. This is a sort of a drill station I've made really out of a single workbench and I've mounted it on a trolley uh, with heavy duty casters that I can lock and I can move this around and wheel it out of the way. Here's the new drill press. As I said, I'm very pleased with it. Uh, lovely construction. It's difficult to give you an idea of scale with this wide angle lens, but it's big. This is the smaller Axminster Trade drill press, bench mounted one, and it's a monster. 65 kilos or thereabouts. Um, and it, it's got huge capacity, uh, 550 watt motor, 12 speeds, um, really good belt system, V-groove belts, um, rack and pinion uh, to raise and lower the table. I've just stuck an old baking tray on here with magnets at the minute, just to collect the swarf. And uh, just got some heavy duty magnets, so I'll just put that down. Uh, but it's fantastic got some really nice features LED light and you can direct the LED light is directional and uh, very effective really bright light as you can see and the chuck guard is really clever how it works it doesn't get in the way automatically cuts the drill out if you haven't got it on you can remove it as well if you don't want it in there but it, you actually set it to the height of the work and the, the travel um, doesn't affect it so it's a lot more useful really than the ones that go up and down with the quill. Onto the quill. No play in that at all. It's rock solid. Really nice keyless chuck, 1 to 16 millimeter. And a cast iron handle, because the old one I had the they were always coming undone, the metal rods. And it's just really good bit of kit. Very pleased with that. As part of my drill station, I've uh, constructed, just move the cable out of the way, you can see, uh, this little storage unit for my drill bit boxes. They're all in there. And uh, for my machine vise, that just slots away there. And that all works very nicely. Another thing that I've not shown you before is this foot pedal. Um, this is a real heavy duty made in Britain foot pedal, heavy cast construction and what I've done is I've constructed an extension lead with the foot pedal in the middle. I picked this up off eBay the foot pedal and I bought heavy duty uh, plugs and uh, I can plug this in and use it as a foot control for my Dremel so that because it's a bit awkward especially when you're using uh, a Dremel with the flexible um, extension on it uh, you have to turn it on and off uh, it's much easier if I can just operate it by foot I'll show you that here's my Dremel and uh, it's hanging up above my lathe and it's got the uh, flexible drive now it's hanging on a carabiner that is attached to a bungee 
If you follow the bungee up, can you see there's a sort of a gantry up there, a crane thing that I've constructed out of plywood. And inside this, the bungee zigzags backwards and forwards across some PTFE rollers I made. And what this means is uh, there's a heck of a lot of stretch on this. This and uh, I can pull it down to where I'm working and it travels up out of the way. When I'm not using I actually unclip it from this and put it on a hook to keep it well out of the way. But there's a little cleat system here as well so I can lengthen or shorten the bungee as well. But that works very nicely. It means that I've got nice easy control over the flexible drive it's not being pulled away from me all the while and i can stretch it to where where i'm working i'm very pleased with that and i made a just a bracket to clip it onto the wall to keep it out of the way but there's the, uh, the foot control down there so when i'm working with it you know i turn the uh, dremel on there I can pick pick this up. Sorry about the awful camera work, but then and so I'm using my foot to control the Dremel. Now this foot pedal I could also rig up to my scroll saw, but I'll have to change the switch on the scroll saw because it's got an NVR switch on there at the moment which is no good if you want to use a foot pedal it'll have to have a straight on off switch but that's a project for the future but that is basically that um, much more space than I used to have I used to have literally about four square foot of um, space to stand in front of my lathe and I had to keep moving things all the while to do stuff it's still a work in progress you can see the extension leads on the floor there uh, i'm having problems with the electrics uh, they don't really cope with machines especially with a dust extractor running at the same time uh, and that reminds me of other modification i've done to the workshop i've got a record power air filter up there um, just to help get rid of some of the fine dust out of here but we've got rather old electrics in the house and I had a friend of mine come out to look at the electrics because I want a ring main putting in the garage and we've got to have quite a bit of rewiring done it's turned into a major job which is a shame so still a work in progress hopefully it won't be long before I can get that done and uh, it'll make life a lot easier I'm getting through a lot of 13 amp fuses at the moment all right folks well, thanks for sticking with me, and hopefully I'll have some nice projects for you soon. Finally, here are some pictures of the competition winners with their prizes from the competition I ran last year. It's Keith, Dimitri and Nathan. Nathan is from the Arctic Circle in Canada, and he has his own really great YouTube channel called Newman Explore. I'll put a link to that in the description. More videos coming soon. And don't forget to check out UKIS, the highlight of the UK and Ireland YouTube woodturning calendar.